Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer held here in the choir of Chester Cathedral. Welcome to those who are greeting and joining us online. Welcome to those who are also in the service here in the choir. Um, today we celebrate evening prayer in the Easter season and the uh, it's not a feast day but a commemoration of the Lutheran pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who died towards the end of the war. war. Um, actually, within three weeks of the end of the war, uh, as he was part of a plot to try and assassinate Hitler and was discovered and executed as a result. Our service takes place on page 269 in our books, if you're using those, and our psalm for today is of Psalm 104, and that's on page 102, when we get to that very long psalm, I will take the odd verses, if you could take the even verses, and we will see our way through it. Service so starts with these words. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let, let heaven, let heaven and, earth and earth rejoice. rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the deep waters of death you brought your people to new birth. By raising your Son to life in triumph, through him dark death has been destroyed, and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. So Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honour, wrapped in light as in a garment. You spread out the heavens like a curtain and lay the beams of your dwelling place in the waters above. You make the clouds your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and flames of fire your servants. You laid the foundations of the earth that it never should move at any time. You covered it with deep like a garment. The waters stood high above the hills. At your book they fled, at the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They rose up to the hills and flowed down to the valleys beneath, to the place which you had appointed for them. You have set them at their bounds that they should not pass, nor turn again to cover the earth. You send the springs into the brooks which run among the hills. You give drink to every beast of the field, and the wild ass quenches their thirst. Beside them the birds of the air make their nests and sing among the branches. You water the hills from your dwelling on high. The earth is filled with the fruit of your works. You make grass to grow for the cattle and plants to meet our needs. Bringing forth food from the earth and wine to gladden our hearts. Oil to give us a cheerful countenance and bread to strengthen our hearts. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted, in which the birds build their nests, while the fir trees are a dwelling for the stork. The mountains are a refuge for the wild goats, and the stony cliffs for the conies. You appointed the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness that it may be night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they are gone to lay themselves down in their dens. 
People go forth to their work and to their labour until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is a sea spread far and wide, and there moves creatures beyond number, both small and great. There go the ships, and there is that Lathidian, which you have made to play in the deep. All of these look to you, to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die and return again to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. So shall my song please him, while I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed out of the earth, and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. first reading this evening is from Deuteronomy chapter 1, commencing at verse 19. Israel's refusal to enter the land. Then just as the Lord our God had ordered us, we set out from Horeb and went through all that great and terrible wilderness that you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites until we reach Cadiz Barnea. I said to you, you have reached the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. See, the Lord your God has given the land to you. Go up, take possession as the Lord, the God of your ancestors has promised you. Do not fear or do not be, or be distra- dismayed. All of you came to me and said, Let us send men ahead of us to explore the land for us and bring back a report to us regarding the route by which we should go up and the cities we will come to. The plan seemed to go go good to me and I selected twelve of you, one from each tribe. They set out and went up into the hill country and when they reached the valley of Eskol, they spied it out and gathered some of the land's produce, which they brought down to us. They brought back a report to us and said, It is a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. But you are unwilling to go up. You rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You grumbled in your tents and said, It is because the Lord hates us that he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to hand us over to the Amorites to destroy us. Where are we heading? Our kindred have made our hearts fail by reporting. The people are stronger and taller than we are. The cities are large and fortified up to heaven. We actually saw there the offspring of Anakim. I said to you, have no dread or fear of them. The Lord your God goes before you, is the one who will fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt, before your very eyes, and in the wilderness, where you saw how the Lord God carried you, just as one carries a child, all the way that you travelled until you reached this place. But in spite of this, you have no no trust in the Lord your God 
who goes before you on the way to seek out a place for you to camp. In fire by night and in cloud by day, show you the route you should, you should take. When the Lord heard your words, he was wrathful and swore, not one of these, not one of these evil generation shall see the good land that I swore to give your ancestors, except Caleb, son of Jephna. He shall see it, and to him and to his descendants I will give the land on which you set foot, <clears throat> because of his complete fidelity to the Lord. Even with me, the Lord was angry on your account, saying, You also shall not enter there. Joshua, son of Nun, your assistant, shall enter there. Encourage him, for he is the one who will secure Israel's possession of it. And as for your little ones, who you thought would become booty, your children, who today do not yet know what right from wrong, they shall enter there, to them I will give it, and they shall take possession of it. But as for you, journey back into the wilderness, into the direction of the Red Sea. Here ends our first reading. Our refrain is taken from 1 Peter, the Song of Faith. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb who, without spot or stain, Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You are ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Our second reading is from the Gospel of John, commencing at chapter 20, verse 11. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And, the, and then she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father 
and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that these had things had been said to her. Here ended our second reading. Our New Testament responsory is taken from Psalm 118. We're on page 272. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my son. He has, he has become, become my salvation. And if we can, we stand for the Magnificat. The stone which the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and scattered the proud with their conceit. Casting down the mighty from the thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The, the stone, stone which the builders rejected has, has become, become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. We sit or kneel to pray. On this day that the Lord has made, let us pray for the people he has redeemed, that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross, praying with our cycle of prayer here at the cathedral for our partner diocese in the Congo for Venerable Jean Bagada, diocesan secretary in Boga Diocese, who has started a project for the rehabilitation of young women who have been sexually abused. And we pray for that project because the funds have caused it to stall. So we ask that, Lord, you would grant those in authority, authority the wisdom to help those in need and the funds to be released. Pray within the Anglican Communion for Derry and Raffo in the Church of Ireland. In this diocese we pray for our bishops, for Mark and Julie and Sam, and for the parish of Oldford. Clergy there, the Reverend Julian Beauchamp, Reverend Carl Jones, and lay workers Mrs. Kath Wentall. On this cathedral, we pray for the companions of St. Anselm. Pray for our choir and our choristers, our lay clerks, as they take some well-needed rest and ask that they will be refreshed as they return to bring music and lead the worship here at the cathedral. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That all people may receive the good news of his victory, and particularly that those born to new life in the waters of baptism may know the power of his resurrection, praying for those that have been baptized and confirmed, praying for those that are responding to a call to ordination, that you, O oh Lord, would speak clearly to them, they would know your voice, those discerning that call would hear your voice too. And there will be agreement and a sense of 
working with candidates to see them through the process. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those who suffer pain and anguish may find healing and peace in the wounds of Christ. Praying for those who've walked around the cathedral today, lit candles, offered silent prayers. Praying for those for whom no prayer has been offered. Praying for the isolated and the elderly, those in our streets who find no roof over their head. The work of the agencies trying to contend with our difficulties in housing and homelessness. Praying for those who we are concerned about, who are ill, who are struggling, who are in anguish. Particularly for those that have sought the prayers of this church, for Peter Jenner, for Carol Weaver, for Judith Hall, for Reverend Stephen Smalley, His Majesty King Charles, Her Royal Highness Catherine, Prince of Wales, Princess of Wales. Praying that you, O Lord, would comfort those and heal those that are struggling with infirmity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That in the undying love of Christ we may be united with all who have died in the faith of Christ, particularly those that will die this night. We ask, Lord, that you would stand with them, you would walk with them in that final journey. Bring them great peace. Pray for those whose anniversary occurs at this time of year. Particularly pray for Christopher Hewitson and Sharon Wiggins as their funerals happen or have happened of late and asking for the repose of their souls. Praying that, O oh Lord, you would surround their families with your loving arms and grant them your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend the world in which Christ rose from the dead to the mercy and protection of God. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.